This is lesson 8-1, part 3. In this lesson, we will use inverse, joint, and other variation equations to solve problems. So, these are some, on the left you will see some statements, and on the right you'll see the equation that goes with that statement. So, first we see v, z varies jointly with x and y. Jointly is a word that means directly for two or more variables. So since z varies directly with x and z also varies directly with y, we say z varies jointly with x and y, and the equation would look like this. Notice you still have a k or a constant term. Second statement, z varies jointly with x and y, so x and y are multiplied by k, and inversely with w, so you can have an equation that is both direct and inverse at the same time. Third example, z varies directly with x, so x is multiplied by k, and inversely with the product yw, so yw is dividing k. So, this is the type of problem we could solve with that. The number of bags of grass seed n needed to reseed a yard varies directly with the area A, and inversely with the weight of the bag, which is called w. So if we take that statement, we can write it into an equation. So the number of bags of grass seeded N that will be needed to reseed a yard um, that varies directly with the area. So area is directly, that gets multiplied by K. And the weight is inversely, so that W divides K. So then we take the top of this statement to figure out what K is. If it takes two three-pound bags, so N is two, and the weight is three pounds, to seed an area of 3,600 square feet, so the area is 3,600. So we're finding K first. So three goes into 3,600 1,200 times, and then we divide both sides by 1,200, and we get K equals two over 1,200, which is the same as 1 over 600. So now our equation looks like n equals, like this, and k is 1 over 600, which means there's a 1 in the numerator, which is not necessary to write, and the 600 goes in the denominator. Even though it's k, it ends up being in the denominator because it's a fraction. Now we can use this equation to answer this question. How many three-pound bags will seed 9,000 square feet? So we put 9,000 in for A, because that's the area. 600 is our constant term, and the bags still weigh three pounds apiece. So we get 9,000 divided by 1,800, which equals five. So it takes five bags to seed that much yard. Here's another example from the world of physics. It says gravitational potential energy, PE, is a measure of energy. Potential energy varies directly with an object's mass. So PE varies directly with mass. So mass gets multiplied by the constant term. Um, and its height in meters above the ground. Mass and height. So these are both directly. Physicists use g to represent the constant of variation, which is gravity. So instead of using k here, we can put in a g. And that's our formula, which you should recognize from your science classes. PE equals um, gmh or mgh or any order you want to put it. It's the same thing. So a skateboarder has a mass of 58 kilograms and a potential energy of 2,273.6 joules. What is the gravitational potential energy of a 65 kilogram skateboarder on the half pipe? Um, okay, the half pipe, uh, I neglected to put that in here, but the half pipe is four meters high, so the height here is four, and we're calculating for G. If you're, um, up on all your physics stuff, you're going to know the answer to G already, but we'll actually do the math. We're going to multiply 58 times 4, and then we'll take 2,273.6 and divide by that answer. 
And we get that G is 9.8. And this would be um, gravity, so meters per second squared. Okay, so now we can answer this question. What is the gravitational potential energy of a 65 kilogram, kilogram skateboarder on the half pipe? The half pipe is still 4 meters high, so the potential energy is going to be 9.8 for gravitational constant times the 65 kilogram rider times 4 meters high, and that gives 2,548 joules.